Hello Pilgrims, welcome to Santiago. It's Wednesday, April 17. I'm Mark David Walsh, and this is your Camino News Update. Well, that was Mark David Walsh. He is an Australian pilgrim who is volunteering for the next two weeks at Camino Companions. I will have more about Camino Companions coming up later in the show. We have a great show for you today. John is in Australia for the national screening tour of the movie he's in, The Way My Way. Lindsay went out to Finisterre to do some research for you. Rocco is back with another story from day two of the Kamano Kodo. And we have Dan Jarvis from the UK from Camino Hacks and Tips to give us a few tips on whether we should be wearing one pair of socks or two pair of socks to prevent blisters while we're walking. Well, stay until the very end where we have our Camino calendar and let's get to it. Our resident emerging movie star, Johnny Walker, is on the national screening tour for the movie he's in. Let's check in with him in between his autographing sessions. Johnny? So if everyone would like to shuffle down, I'll take the end seat. So oh, you can sit wherever you want, Johnny. You've earned the right. 54 Caminos, you can do whatever you want. There's no whiskey in that. But I'm sure, I'm sure we can arrange some. Hello everyone, this is John. This week, not in Santiago, I'm in Australia, in a town called Gulgong with my friend Bill Bennett. We're here to promote his film, but more of that later on. Here in Australia, the sun is shining, and I'm glad to say it's the same in Santiago. And if you look at the weather forecast, you'll see that there's going to be sun for the next week and way beyond. So it's great, a great time to walk the Camino to Santiago. And many pilgrims are doing that. So far this year, 43,500 pilgrims have arrived. In the last few days, they've been arriving at the rate of 1,000 per day or more. And we know that this, in this time of the year, there's 20% more pilgrims than the same period last year. And if you look at the graph, you can see that the line just keeps going up and up and up and we'll keep you posted on that. And a, a stop press, a piece of news that just came in from the Cathedral of Santiago, the Botifamiro has not yet been repaired and replaced and may not be in action until June of this year. Thank you very much. Well, our lead story this week unfolded online when a massive controversy erupted within a Camino Facebook group over the admin's fundraising practices and handling of funds. Transparency and accountability were sorely lacking when questioned, leaving many of us feeling deeply disappointed. However, amidst all this disappointment, I am so thankful for the courageous pilgrims who shed light on these concerns. While we can't alter the past, it's crucial that we don't lose faith. The Camino transcends any individual's missteps, its essence while the Camino remains unwavering and strong. Now, moving forward, let's focus on steps to prevent such occurrences. Number one, Always seek out reliable information from reputable Facebook groups with trusted admins like Camino de Santiago All Routes and Camino Pilgrim International Discussion Group. And that's just to name two of several trusted groups that are out there. Be cautious of groups where admins seek some type of financial gain for that work, as most, if really not all, are actually run by dedicated volunteers. Always prioritize integrity over popularity when choosing communities to engage with. Now look, your age and your gender, that doesn't matter to the Camino. All are welcome on the Camino. What does matter is your intention and integrity before, during, and after your walk. You choose how, why, and the way in which you walk it, and the way in which you participate in Camino-related events, groups, and activities. Align with pilgrims that match the integrity in which you hold yourself accountable. Keep in mind, we really don't know someone thoroughly just from online interactions or knowing them for a short amount of time. If you see something that doesn't look right, speak up, ask questions. If someone doesn't like your questions, well, then that may be just the only answer you need. Three, exercise discernment when supporting Camino related causes. Research charities thoroughly, ensure they are registered and transparent. Demand accountability from the outset and don't hesitate to question inconsistencies. Trust your intuition and don't be deterred by resistance to your inquiries. Just because something has the word Camino in it doesn't mean it's automatically trustworthy. Scrutinize everything. Now, pilgrims, let's remain resilient. 
The Camino community moves forward now, strengthened by our collective integrity and love. Now let's check in with Lindsay. He just walked to the end of the world. Here are his top tips to better your time getting there as well as once you're there. Lindsay? Hi there. Lindsay here again. I've spent the past week on the Camino Finisterre, walking to the end of the earth. This five-day Camino starts at the Cathedral in Santiago and winds its way quickly into the leafy countryside surrounding the city. For me, this walk is a great way to chill out and integrate the larger Camino experience, ready for my next steps. Here are five pilgrim things to know about the Camino Finisterre. 1. If you don't have the full five days, Monbus has an excellent bus service where you can cut out some days if you are pressed for time. 2. Instead of a Compostela, you can get an attractive Finisterrana certificate from the municipal albergue or the tourist office. You will need to show your pilgrim credentials, which can be either the ones you've been using or a special one for Finisterre Muxia available from the pilgrim office in Santiago. 3. The municipal albergue is closed on Saturday and Sunday. No need to be concerned though, there are plenty of great private albergues in town to choose from. 4. To stay in the municipal albergue or be eligible for the certificate, you must have walked, biked or ridden a horse the whole way. 5. The zero kilometre mark on this route is at the lighthouse, which is three kilometres out of town. In fine weather, it offers stunning sunsets. If you do go to see the sunset, be prepared with a head torch for safety. I'm sure I will return to Finisterre whenever I need some R&R. &R. Until next time, Buen Camino. Now joining us for the first time is Dan from the popular YouTube channel and newsletter called Camino Hacks and Tips. He's a very experienced pilgrim providing great information to help you get more out of your Camino. If you've walked with blisters like I have, you know you want to prevent them at any cost. It's painful. One debate we see a lot online is should you wear one or two pairs of socks? Let's see what Dan says. Hello from the UK. It's Dan from the Camino Hacks and Tips YouTube channel. And I am just happy that it's sunny and not raining in the UK for once. But I'm here to ask you a question. Are you a single or a double sock type of pilgrim? Now, the double sock method is where you take a synthetic liner sock, place that over your foot, then you place a wool sock over the synthetic liner. With the idea being that the synthetic liner sock wicks away the sweat and then the wool outer sock traps that moisture. Something to bear in mind with this method, it will make your foot sit bigger in your trainer, so you may want to get a larger trainer, say a size up. And on a personal note, I can't use this method in the summer because it makes my feet too hot and I get heat rash on my feet. And the single sock method is where you take, well, for me, it would be a smart wool sock, which is a blend of wool and synthetic fibers, and it offers cushioning and it is thermoregulating. So, you need to ask yourself, are you a double sock pilgrim or a single sock pilgrim? So experienced pilgrims, which are you? A one or a two sock kind of pilgrim? Comment here to help out soon to be first time walkers. And be sure to check out Dan's other amazing videos for more tips and hacks before you walk. Links to connect with Dan are in the show notes. Now let's head to Japan and walk with Rocco Rossi on an ancient pilgrimage path. Be sure to watch all the way until the end to see him performing a sacred prayer ritual right from the path. Day two was just supposed to follow the plan. Takahata to Zugizakura Oji, um, 13 kilometers, six to eight uh, hours to complete uh, that kind of elevation. And then bus back to Chikatsuya village uh, where I had accommodation for the night. But uh, early morning start due to jet lag, great dinner uh, that John and his magical team put together at the, at the lodge. Uh, and uh, the energy of everything that was going on during the, the day and the place, and boom, double staged it all the way to Hoshin Monoji, another 14 kilometers, supposedly six to eight uh, 
hours to complete uh, with a lot more uh, ascent and, and descent than the first part of the stage. And I literally made it to the bus stop at 422, just before the 424 left to go back to Chikatsuya. A phenomenal day. Here are just a few of the highlights. Walk with me a while. Get a sense of this forest as a, as a cathedral. Incredible spirit and being the first one out, I've been uh, breaking through spider webs. It's quite a wonderful, interesting feeling. The trail toilets are definitely first class on the Kumanu Kodo. Uh, here you go. Uh, check this out. That's pretty similar, but then you've got a uh, Fabulous Toto uh, toilet with everything, bidet, etc. I mean, it's first class all the way when you're doing the Kumano Kodo. As pilgrims, our arrival in Santiago brings a whirlwind of emotions, from the elation of achievement to the bittersweet realization that our physical pilgrimage has just come to an end. In these profound moments, we may yearn for deeper connection and a chance to share our Camino journey while listening to fellow pilgrims share theirs. Or we may want to simply sit quietly in the company of pilgrims who really get what we just did. English-speaking pilgrims have two wonderful resources to do just that. Both are located at the pilgrim's office and are open to all of any faith or no faith. All are welcome. The first is Pilgrim Mass in English with Father Manny. During this special Mass, you get the opportunity to meet other pilgrims and light a candle for an intention if you'd like. Manny, a pilgrim too, shares comforting words each Mass that I find inspiring and full of compassion. Mass is held in the chapel on the first floor at the pilgrim office daily at 10.30 a.m. every day except Wednesdays. The second resource is Camino Companions. They just reopened for the season, and in just a few days' time, they've already had pilgrims from numerous countries visit. Camino Companions offers a haven for heartfelt exchanges with pilgrims that have just walked, along with veteran pilgrim volunteers. Under the guidance of Sister Catherine, Sister Alethea, and their devoted team, they offer two services to pilgrims daily. The first is they offer a casual pilgrim conversation with tea and coffee following mass, and secondly, they offer daily individual and or group pilgrim reflections at 3 p.m. I've attended both a few times and found the conversations very moving and helpful. Their space is located on the second floor of the pilgrim office, room number six. Attending Mass with Father Manny and spending time with Camino Companions is an absolutely wonderful way to bookend your Camino journey. It's a chance to linger in Santiago just a bit longer, giving yourself the gifts of presence, connection, and reflection, and allowing the Camino's profound lessons to root a little more deeply before rushing back to the familiar. You'll be ready to answer questions back home about how was your vacation in Spain? This extra time processing your Camino will allow the transformative power to continue to gently unfurl at a peaceful pace in a city that, well, can feel a little busy at times after the solitude of walking a Camino. You can hear more about Sister Catherine's personal Camino and how it led her to start Camino Companions from the interview I did with her at the Camino Cafe. Find the link in the show notes. Well, that's a wrap for this week's Camino News Update. I want to thank our pilgrim team of experienced pilgrims for putting this show together for you. And I want to thank you for watching. We hope to see you in Santiago soon, pilgrims. Ciao!